Peter here. Today we're looking at a rectangular cuboid encased in plastic bubbles, uh, which is pretty interesting in and of itself. All right, but let's dig a little deeper. I'm told this is supposed to be a fountain pen that works with India ink, which most fountain pens don't. Um, in fact, I've ruined a couple of my own fountain pens this way. Right, so in the inside here, it says Indigraph. It's kind of glued in there. Some instructions. I'm sure I'll need to look at these later. Nice little bottle of ink. Crisp design there. I'm guessing this is India ink of some sort. And then here we have the pen itself, the Indigraph. Is that what it's called? The Indigraph? It's cold. That's the first thing I noticed. It's cold. It's made out of metal. Okay. I thought unscrewing that I would see the pen part, but I see the innards of it. Uh, it's got a piston. Okay. No, I, I see what I did wrong now. I thought I was unscrewing the cap, but I was unscrewing the back. Okay, here's the lid. Okay, right off the bat, I noticed something different here, which is that there are water droplets on the nib of the pen. Do you see that? Check that out. I think that's water. Yeah, so it's, it's not ink. My fingernail is dirty, I'm sorry. I was, I was doing some art stuff. So basically, from what I understand, the basic design behind this is that there is a tiny water reservoir here, okay? Like so. It dribbled a little bit. I didn't know what I was doing. It's okay. Ah, okay, so I made a tiny mess, but it's just water. Everything's fine. I, I should have read the instructions. So there's actually a little hole here where I think you can pour water into. So I think what the idea is you pour, I think there's still water in there through like surface tension, not all the water fell out. You pour water in there and then that keeps the tip of the pen moist. Now I guess I don't know. It's not like soaking wet where it's like inconvenient to like hold it every time. That, that wouldn't be good. Like it's already dry, so. Let's put some of this, I'm guessing this is India ink. Oh yeah, it says Indian ink right there on it, I didn't notice. I mean, this is the test. If I put this, the first time I ever got a fountain pen, I didn't know I had to put special fountain pen ink in it. I mean, it's not that special, but I, I all I had at home was India, India ink. India? Indian? And I put that in my Lamy fountain pen, which is a solid pen, right? And it works well. I put it in there. And it clogged up both. I bought two Lamy fountain pens. I put, I filled them up. I was so excited. I put it in there and it clogged them up for like two years. And for quite a while, I was discouraged. So, I mean, this could open up all sorts of new avenues, right? If you can use India, Indian ink in a fountain pen. Hopefully, what really matters here is if this is a good fountain pen. All right, so let's open up the back now. I think due to the size of this bottle, I am going to pop the piston out and fill it up this way. Just because it's a tiny bottle. Ugh. I made a mess already. All right. There we go. Then pop this in here. Squeeze it a tiny bit. I see some coming out into the tip there. And... There are a lot of varieties of Indian ink out there. People use them for all sorts of things. And I guess before this pen, they're kind of off limits for fountain pen sort of stuff. But we'll see if it works or not. I'm cautiously optimistic. The metal, the metal casing or body of the pen, I guess, feels good. That threading feels okay. Some of the paint is gone from the thread there, but I guess, I mean, no, it feels solid. It feels okay. Not amazing, but okay. Should I pop the lid back on there for a second to uh, hydrate it with a little water? 
water reservoir. I think it's working. Swish, swish. All right, let's see if this works. Peter tests out a new pen. Pen. Don't know how to write. It feels okay. It feels okay. The ink is a little bit different. I think that just might be the nature of it being um, Indian ink. But it feels like it flows all right. I'm, I'm weirdly surprised by it, you know? Because it's like so different than... I don't know, is this really all it takes to keep a fountain pen working well with Indian ink, is have a little water reservoir in the lid? Is that the secret to keep it from gumming everything up? You just gotta keep it from drying there? So, does this mean that if I forget to put the lid on my pen and leave it uncapped overnight, uh, that all my problems will return? Like the amount of water left in there? Can you see that? The amount of water left in, in there right there? That's pretty cool. It's like a... I guess it depends how the light's shining on it. That's what it looks like when I have water in my headlights. Also, apparently this is better because you can do water coloring over it and the ink, Indian ink, is more waterproof, so I don't really have any water coloring to do, but I'll try brushing a little bit of ink over these lines and we'll see if it works better. All right, let's see, this is just a wet brush. It does work pretty good. I have noticed that when I used a lot of my other uh, types of inks from my fountain pens and even my road train pens that uh, the, the ink is not water fast, you know, it starts seeping and spreading and stuff like that. But yeah, it seems that is a big plus right there too, I guess, if that's the sort of thing you're into. Just a wet brush here doesn't seem to be affecting it at all. I guess, I mean, you have to let it dry first, uh, but let's see. L let me test it out with Waterman's ink. This pen is a little old and crusty. Let me test it out with Rotring ink. Oh, it's already seeping just because the, the, the paper's damp because it, cause it bled through. It's already a little seepage. Uh, water, I can't spell it all when, people, when I'm recording. I think I get stage fright. Water mats, we'll just put. Ah. Sometimes that's what it takes to get a rotring started for me, is a little bit of that. Rotring isograph. I mean, the isograph is more of the pen type than the. But this is. This is Rotring ink here that I'm using. Yeah. Then if we take the wet brush and use it, I think these are dry. Yeah, see it's dry. Wet brush over these. Uh, I mean, that was actually okay. Okay, what about this Waterman's ink? Okay, see that one? Troublesome. So I guess that's more, this is more of a standard um, fountain pen ink right here, which is why the India ink is, well, now, now my brush is all dirty from the fountain pen ink, but you get the idea. Anyways, wow. So yeah, see this is, uh, this was easily completely brutalized by the, a wet brush. And this stood up fine with the India ink. So we can draw a picture with this now. So I put this pen to the test with a quick little drawing, a little doodle here. And I've got to say, the pen works fine, okay? It works great. Uh, no major, no real complaints about the basic functioning of the pen. 
it draws lines on the paper just fine, right? There wasn't like any skipping, stuttering, none of that thing comes out. It goes onto the paper nice and smooth. And uh, basically, that's what you want from a pen, right? Good. Excellent. Now, this is a, uh, it's a Kickstarter pen. Is that like the early access version of a pen? I don't know if it will be um, available after the Kickstarter is done. Let me see. There are four, as, as of the time of I'm recording this, there are 14 days left on the Kickstarter. Um, they didn't pay me to make this video or anything. I got sent the, the pen for free. Uh, looks like they're based in Spain, if that has anything, if that matters at all. Um, here's the real kicker, okay? It's a cool new product. Um, they're, they're doing something I haven't seen before, you know, a, a, a fountain pen that works with India ink. Uh, but here's the real kicker. To buy the pen on the Kickstarter right now, you have to pledge 65 euros, or it says that's about 73 American dollars, U.S. dollars, okay? <sighs> That's a little tough. i got to be honest. I mean, it's just a functional pen to me. Um, I personally don't think I would buy this for $73. That might be a little bit hypocritical for me because I have bought other pens for more than $73. But, you know, you have to decide for yourself whether that's too much. A lot of people um, spend way more than this on pens that don't have the features this pen has. Uh, but I don't know. You just got to decide. So, I mean, what this pen has going for it that other pens doesn't is, the, you know, like that ability to use a whole other category of inks that you might have. I don't know. So I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they do have other nibs. Okay, I have the F nib here that I'm using. They also have EF, okay, extra, that's extra fine. F uh, and M, F is fine and M is medium, I guess. Now, but they also have other nibs, nib like shapes. Uh, here I have, in this video, I'm using the arrow sh size nib shape, style, shapes, yeah. They also have a calligraphy nib and a classic nib, which looks more like a like an old timey fountain pen sort of thing. Uh, I personally prefer the more classic look, but I feel like they've, I think the classic one has a bit of a, you know how they kind of put a ballpoint on the end of those sometimes? I kind of like that, but the arrow one's okay. The calligraphy one will have a kind of a, a flat tip on the end of it so you can, it's kind of a chisel tip, you know what I mean? Not a chisel, but that way you can make flat parts and thin parts for your calligraphy letters. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, it's a cool addition to my collection. They say, according to this timeline, that it's May right now and they're going to start machining right now and the Kickstarter finishes in the middle of May and then by July they'll be shipping. So I don't know. What, I'm, what I don't know is if the ones that get sent out will be exactly the same as the ones, as the one that I have here. Um, I guess it'll be pretty much the same, but I guess these are just the little, I have the, um, I think they have like test test pens they send out and I have like the number 23 or something like that so that's pretty cool I got this one um, but I mean yeah I'd say this pen would be good for of course general general usage but also anyone who's really into watercoloring and doing any sort of I don't know what you call it wet work mixed media on top of their ink right uh, that works with some types of ink some type of ink some types of ink and, you know, I've done it before with my roach rings, and it hasn't been much of a problem, but I have noticed when I've drawn with fountain pen inks before and then tried to watercolor on top of it that it all gets washed away. And I didn't really expect that to happen because I just wasn't really thinking ahead. But at least you know with this stuff, with if you use India ink, I guess it's just a lot more waterproof. So it's great in that regard if you want a nice fountain pen that you could use uh, with your watercoloring um, but other than that, I feel like personally you can get a really good pen uh, for a fraction of the price that does the same thing this one does. Um, 
They also told me that this, the lid might fit on the, my rotaring isographs and keep those those lids, I mean, my, the, the tips of my rotarings wet, but it didn't fit. Um, this is a cool technology, a cool idea to have a little water capsule there in the tip of it. Uh, I just don't know. I mean, if my rotarings had a little water cap in the top, I mean, that'd be sweet. That might keep them from gumming up a little bit and keep me from sucking on the tips and getting a bunch of ink in my mouth every time I want to draw. So, I mean, it's definitely a cool idea they've got going on here. It's definitely a cool thing they figure out how to do. And, um, yeah, you just, you just unscrewed the tip, the cap, the cap of the cap. The cap has a cap. And, and then hold it under the faucet. You unscrew it part way, and there's a little hole, and you hold that under the faucet, and it, like, fills up somehow. And uh, it doesn't post, which is a downer, but more and more as I use these fountain pens, sometimes it's better if it doesn't post because sometimes they get too long and too um, unwieldy and heavy on the backside if they don't post. I'm kind of, my opinion on that is kind of changing a little bit, so you just got to learn to keep track of your lid, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I mean, the pen feels good. Like, it feels well, well constructed. I just, uh, I feel like it's a very niche product, you know, which, I mean, I guess maybe that goes without saying. If, if you see this, you probably know if you want this and if you need this, right? If you see this and you're like, whoa, a fountain pen that can use India ink, I've been waiting for that for forever, then you're probably like, you can grab it. But if you're like, oh, I don't know why I'd ever want that, then you're probably not going to be the type of person that would spend $73 on it. So they probably, they probably have like a certain specific audience. I mean, or you can just get it because it's a cool novelty thing. I don't know. It's a cool addition to your pen collection if you're a pen collector. But uh, anyways, this is pretty cool, I guess. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. All right. See you later.